All right, y'all, we are live on this beautiful Sunday morning. Blessings to everybody in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, even if you are not religious. I still pray you and your family are super blessed. And guys, Bitcoin's taking a massive dump right now. We're long. Oh my goodness, we're dumping. <laughs> Freaking out over here. But that's okay. Huge shout out to the sponsors of the channel. First of all, a major shout out to Market Cipher. All right, MarketCypherTrading.com. All right, shout out to all the pencil necks in the chat. Major shout out to my exchanges I'm currently trading on. First of all, guys, ZoomX in a Bitcoin long on ZoomX. All right, this is a long trade that we gave in the Casper crew on Friday. When I told everybody I'm long from the setup that we gave earlier that morning. All right, also chilling in another long over here on ZoomX from the long setup we gave last week from the exact bottom, baby. Casper Crew Don't Play. Also, shout out to Mexi. Mexi, the best deal on fees in the world. All right. 0% uh, limit order fees, 0.01% taker order fees. Also, you can buy over 1,500 altcoins on here. All right, my most recent altcoin purchase, guys, was actually Omnom. So, shout out to whoever was in the live stream on. Whatever day it was, was it Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, someone said, look at Omnom. We did some analysis here. I said, let me let me put a buy order right here. We got a buy order right here. We are currently breaking out, making a new high on Omnom, which is interesting. I'm up right now 126% on Omnom, baby. Wow. We're breaking out. Shout out to Omnom. Omnom, baby. Wow. Breaking out. Omnom. Wow. Wow. 127% on spot. Can you imagine if Bitcoin got moves like this? That's crazy. All right. Also, huge shout out to the Casper Crew VIP Discord where we give these juicy trade setups. Not signals, guys, but I do let people know what I'm doing. All right. Not financial advice. If you want to join the Casper Crew VIP Discord, you can go to jasoncaspertrading.com. You can go ahead and click the link to join the VIP Discord where we have multiple instructors giving their setups, giving their not signals. And uh, yeah, it's just honestly the best trading community in the world. We have a whole beginner's course in there, a whole bunch of cool stuff. Whole bunch of cool stuff. All right. Let's get into this Bitcoin price action, guys. Bitcoin right now in the long trade is coming up to the scariest resistance that we have, which is the Golden Pocket Fibonacci from the high to the low also we have a cdw right here and bitcoin is crying out for help 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 all right massive shout out to everybody in the chat right now shout out to the real king solomon zoomx yeah zoomx shout out to nikhil patil he says happy esther day bro look if anybody celebrates resurrection sunday today may god bless you and your family as you celebrate the most important event in human history the resurrection of the messiah who is god the creator who took on flesh to die for the sin of humanity and rose again on the third day all right shout out to tarmo should i open along on bitcoin uh i don't know man i would not open along here Shout out to Bad Andy. He says, some giant rabbit laid eggs all over my house. Interesting. What are my thoughts on Ondo? We could get into Ondo today. Shout out to The Fish. Says, the best group ever. Shout out to Javad Shafiri. Says, God bless you all. Shout out to Ron Vijay Singh. He says, looking decent, bro. Shout out to Crypto Rick Flair. Who says, he has risen. Uh, shout out to Bobcat Man. Went fishing. Shout out to Shirley Fortress. He says, God bless you all. And a huge shout out to JC, who says, Amen, brother. Shout out to Daytime Crypto in the chat. A huge shout out to Dr. Cheds in the chat. And um, Memory Man, what is going on, Memory Man? Shout out to Memory Man. In the chat, holding it down with a wrench. Shout out to Dave Digital. And by the way, guys, if we can get 1,000 likes in the first half hour of streaming, we will absolutely be giving away 1,000 USDT. Freedom says 80K this week. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. Look, we're gonna, we're, I'm going to be talking about my exact, my exact thoughts on Bitcoin right now. Because you guys know, I've, I've been very bullish. All right, I've been very, very bullish. Can you guys believe this Omnom pump? 
Man, that was an easy setup. That was crazy. I'm glad it worked out. Um, yeah, I, I have been bullish on Bitcoin. I've been bullish on Bitcoin really since since this setup that we gave in the Casper Crew. Uh, coming down to this key level, we've been looking for new highs. Um, you know, this trade that I took on Friday has been a very slow, painful grind. All right. This trade that we took on Friday has been a slow, painful grind, and I'm, I'm going to talk about what I'm thinking. This is not uh, this resistance right here. We might get a significant pullback from this resistance. I wouldn't even be surprised if we come all the way back down below my entry. I'll be honest with you. Or we're going to have to play it by ear here. We're going to have to play it by ear, but I'm going to do some macro analysis on this. All right. Are we going below 50k anytime soon? I'm going to get to it, but honestly, um, shout out to. Uh, Yes, I think we could see a 50k Bitcoin within the next few weeks. I do. I personally do. Shout out to Vector Candle 707 who says, shout out to my landscaper, Jesus. Shout out to Jesus, his landscaper. Uh, shout out to Tony English who says, he has risen and part of the proof is your life. Amen. What do I think about Pulse Chain? I don't really have any, um, any thoughts on Pulse Chain. A mercy receive says, I hope no one's trade goes to Sheol. Yeah, I hope no one's trade goes to Sheol either. All right. Uh, am I, do I think we're losing Bitcoin on, uh, volume on Bitcoin struggling to hold? Uh, yeah, so look. My, Bitcoin right now is dipping down toward the VWAP. And uh, if we lose VWAP, we could come much, much lower right now. But I'm going to tell you my thoughts on what I think is going to be happening with Bitcoin, why I'm still holding these trades. All right, shout out to Fing Book for the super chat. He says, happy Easter to all of you. Happy Resurrection Day to everybody who celebrates the resurrection of Jesus, of Yeshua, the Messiah, on this day. All right, people celebrate on different days. You know, we got the Orthodox celebrating in May. Today, the Catholics and the Protestants who have inherited the Catholic tradition are celebrating on this day, you know. Every day is a great day to celebrate the resurrection of Yeshua, the resurrection of Jesus. Shout out to Chris Higgins who says, this community has changed my profession into being a full-time trader. That's awesome. That is amazing. All right. All right. Shout out to Susan Harris. He is risen. Amen. All right. So look, guys, Bitcoin. Right now, we are in this long trade in the Casper crew. This is a trade that I took on Friday, and I will be honest with you guys. It was a very slow, painful trade, all right? I took the trade on this purple candle here on the four hour when I saw the bounce. We came back down, we came back up, we came back down, we came up, we came back down. Now we're coming up. We are currently finding resistance at the Fibonacci golden pocket resistance. So shout out to everybody who took the trade with me. And shout out to everybody who's been hodling this trade. Now, of course, I'm in multiple Bitcoin long trades, right? I'm in another trade here. I've got 200K on this trade. I've got another 100K on this trade right here. I'm in another Bitcoin trade over here with $100,000 on the position. And then, of course, I'm in another Bitcoin trade over here from the setup we gave in the Casper crew last week with another 200,000. So altogether, I'm in a $600,000 Bitcoin long trade. All right, I'm holding these trades. I am still hoping for higher. Now I'm gonna go over my outlook right now on uh, on Bitcoin in general. Now I, I wish I knew if if you're the person who told me to look at this coin Omnom. All right, you just made me 129% on this. All right, I threw 2K into it, and I just made 2,700 bucks on this. So man, whoever it is, let me know if you're if you're that person. Let me know. I thank you for having me look at this. Uh, coin doge eat doge. <laughs> I never would have thought about this thing. All right. All right. So let's head on over to the Bitcoin chart here. Let's head on over to the Bitcoin chart and make sure to smash the likes guys. Cause if we can get a thousand likes within the first, within the first, uh, half hour, we'll be giving away a thousand dollars. How do I sleep and manage those trades? Easy. I've stop losses and take profits. Right. Right. Uh, Shout out to the Casper crew. All right. All right. Yeah. So let's <laughs> you guys in the chat, you crack me up. All right. So Bitcoin y'all let's, uh, let's, let's just 
let's just remember the overall context is the fact that we are pr we have printed last week and now it's the two week let's start in the two week chart all right the two week chart is about to print a red dot all right potentially at the end of this week we could see the two week chart print a red dot on the weekly chart all right we have already confirmed the red dot all right we've already confirmed the red dot it is a new week and we have gotten two purple candles in a row. Now, what, what do we know about weekly red dots? Weekly red dots, right? They are a, a sign that we are gonna go sideways and down for the next few weeks, right? If we just look historically at everything that's happened since this uptrend began back in November, 2022, the red dot on the weekly means sideways and down in an uptrend. And that means we can expect a, a range to form, right? And right now, our range is very clear. Our range right now is this, right? Around 60K to 74K. This is the sideways range. Something we often see when we get these weekly red dots is it's 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 basically it's a great place for swing traders to buy the dips, but it's a great place for day traders to get wrecked or people who are FOMOing in to get wrecked because what do we do during these sideways ranges? We, we take the highs and we take the lows, right? Look at this range back here. We had a clearly defined range. We took the high, we took the low, right? We come back over here. We have a clearly defined range, right? Established here. We take that high, we take that low. And so I'm assuming the same thing to happen again. And right now for the past few, for the past week, I've been more biased on us coming up to take the high first. All right, and the reason why is because a few things. Number one, on the daily chart, we have printed a nice green dot with the money flow getting thicker. And then on the four hour time frame, we are seeing as we come down uh, toward these, uh, these lows here, we are seeing uh, hidden bullish divergences form on the four hour with, these, with the money flow getting thicker. And so for that reason, I'm still a little bit more biased toward thinking that this trend that we're in right here with our low, our high, our higher low, our higher high, potentially making the higher low already in, we shoot for another higher high. I'm still biased toward this right now. And um, the reason is because, the main reason why I am biased toward that is because this bottom is really, really nice here. We've changed market structure on the four hour. We put in a higher low, we put in a higher high. And so locally speaking, the market structure is still our friend. And then as we look at what happens here, right? You know, what is this thing? Is this thing a bull flag that's gonna break out? The reason why I'm leaning toward a breakout of this range, even if let's say we come down a little bit lower, the reason why I'm leaning toward a breakout of this range is mainly because, you know, if we take a look at the, the order flow chart, right? What's actually happening here as the price here, let's refresh this because it needs to be a little bit refreshed, right? As we look at the, the price action that's happened here, we are seeing a huge amount of shorts opening up within this range here. Okay. Do we have two indicators pulled up right now? We have the CVD, the cumulative volume delta and the open interest. These two things right here are showing us that new trades are opening their positions and the majority of those positions are short trades. And even though there's more shorts than longs, the price is unable to make a lower low, right? Even though there's more shorts than longs, the price is unable to make a lower low. So what does this mean? Well, this basically means that we are seeing some big players holding the price on this trend line, right? So basically you would expect if there's more shorts than longs coming in, price would be making lower lows and lower highs. But instead, as we consolidate in this kind of pattern, every time we come to these lows, we're seeing whales actually step in and absorb the retail traders who are looking for a move to the downside, right? So here's my whale picture here. A very accurate picture of a, of a whale. All right, here's his spout. Here's his eye, all right? Every time price comes down to this trend line, we're seeing bigger players holding the price up. They're actually filling up long orders as retail is shorting these lows. All right, it's very, very interesting. As we see this happening within a triangle pattern, 
you know, while we've been in this uptrend, this has been actually been a, this has been characteristic of a lot of these areas of consolidation before big breaks, right? We saw that happen right over here, right? Throughout the entirety of this chunk of price action, what do we see? We saw open interest increasing. Open interest is telling us our traders opening trades or closing trades. Open interest increasing, telling us traders are opening new positions. CVD getting lower, telling us the majority of the trades opening in this triangle are short trades. When you see an overwhelming amount of short trades and yet price is not getting lower, this is called absorption. The whales are absorbing the retail traders. Look, if you don't like the terminology I use, because whenever I talk about this, people say, Jason, you don't know what you're talking about. All right, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't even care if I don't know what I'm talking about. The point is, whenever you see this happening, it means that somebody is holding price up, all right? And something is happening here to create an imbalance where they're gonna reverse the price in the direction which everyone thinks it's gonna go, all right? If I don't have the proper terminology down, I don't even care. It's so funny to me how people out there will nitpick because I, I call things the wrong thing. But uh, who cares what you call something? Look, if it works, it works. The point is, this illustration that I'm showing you here is a good illustration to let you know what to look for, right? Why is the price not getting lower when there's obviously more shorts? Whales are absorbing it, man. And then they're gonna push that price to the upside. Now we've been seeing that throughout the entirety of this range here. And so that makes me a little bit more biased to a break to the upside. Now something else we've been seeing here, right? Is the introverted head and shoulders pattern, right? The introverted head and shoulders pattern. We have ourselves our left shoulder, we have ourselves our head, and we have ourselves our right shoulder right here, okay? With a breakout target of a new high, right? A breakout target of a new high. Now, we have not yet hit our breakout target of a new high yet, right? We've had a breakout and we've had consolidation and now it looks like we're seeing bullish absorption right here before another uh, break to the upside. Now, um, to me, to me, this, this looks kind of bullish, right? Yeah, we could we could get a move to the downside. This looks bullish. Now, what else have we seen here, right, within this little zone, okay? Now, first of all, the move down to this area right here, this $68, $700 zone, this was a long setup that we gave in advance in the Casper Crew VIP Discord on Monday, right? This is a very key area. If you remember, if anyone's in the Casper Crew, the reason we were looking to long this area at around, you know, 69-ish K is because it was a very, very important support resistance flip. This is the previous bull market all-time high, right? So when we're looking at this chart here and we're looking at the breakout of the introverted head and shoulders pattern, we did get a retest after the breakout, right? We broke out of the introverted head and shoulders pattern but we didn't come back to, to retest the neckline. We came back to actually retest the previous bull market all time high right here, which is why we gave that long trade setup in the Casper crew, right? And that's why I took the long trade from that area. It's a very, very important zone, right? And so after we made that low at the previous bull market all time high, we get our move to the upside, the top of the range. Then we come back down on Friday and so far we've made a higher low. Now that level on Friday, this is the long trade that I'm currently long from like right now, from Friday. Why was that such an important level? Well, that, if you take a look at the chart here, was basically coming back down to the local Fibonacci golden pocket retracement, the 786, we had a weekly level there. We also had a high volume node right there, which is why I was comfortable taking the long trade from that area. And if we take a look at what Marcus Cypher B was doing as we came down to this zone, we could see that Marcus Cypher B is giving us bullish divergences, money flow getting higher over time, momentum waves getting higher over time, right? So if we take a look at um, Marcus Cypher B, as we came down to that most recent low, for me, this is like this is like the, the bread and butter of my trading right here. All right, we're on the 12 minute time frame. We come down to this low, which was a setup, like it's not just a random level, right? This is this is a trade setup that we had given in advance in the Casper crew. And as we come down to that level, 
what is happening on Market Cipher B. Look at the money flow, all right? The money flow on the 12 minute time frame as we're making that low is getting higher. Look at the momentum waves over here, right? Getting higher. This is giving us what I like to call the, the nip cheek pattern, the nip cheek pattern, right? First of all, on the 12 minute time frame, we have multiple bottoms, right? Right over here, this is called the pig nipple pattern, all right? We come over to Google, we look for pig nipples, all right? Pig nipples, right over here. Let's see, here, here we go. Pig nipples, we're gonna go ahead, take these nips, we're gonna put them on the chart, all right? Look at this, lines up perfectly, right? Right here. We got the pig nipples, right here. And then after the pig nipples, as money flow gets higher, we come down and we make another higher low. And this is giving us now the uneven butt cheek pattern, all right? We have a very big juicy left butt cheek and a skinny right butt cheek. Now we go ahead, we take this, we put it onto the chart, we pull it, stretch out the cheeks. Look at that. The nip cheek pattern, very, very bullish. All right, as we come down to key support and on the one hour time frame, what were we seeing as we hit that low? We were definitely seeing the uneven butt cheek pattern, right? Look at this, we come down, we hit the low. Where did we hit that low? Hang on, hang out. Yeah, right here, look at this guys, we hit the low. Right here, and what do we see as we hit that low? Price is getting lower, but Marcus Cypher B is once again giving us that juicy uneven butt cheek pattern. BitBoy butt cheeks, double green dot, and then so far, as we've seen price continue here, we're, we're seeing the momentum, waves getting higher, everything getting higher here, 24 minute time frame, money flow getting thicker over time, 12 minute money flow still getting thicker over time here, making me think we could see another move to the upside, right? So as we actually watch right now, Bitcoin is coming to a very important level, which is the VWAP, all right, the volume weighted average price. The volume weighted average price, that's this white line, Look at that from to the exact dollar bouncing from it now. Let's check out our lower time frames to see if this bounce is gonna give us anything significant here. Um, you know, maybe we've got a hidden bullish divergence on the six minute after a nice bull dip here. Let's check out our one minute. Uh, it's not looking as good as I would want it to look, guys but we do have some slight bull div on the one minute as we hit into that VWAP here. All right, some slight bull div on the one minute. Now here's the thing. I'm pretty sure tomorrow, the New York stock market is going to open again. And then we're gonna see a real decision on what Bitcoin wants to do tomorrow. So for me, I'm still looking for this. I am still looking for this. All right, call me crazy. Call me cuckoo. All right, maybe I am both of those things. But I am still looking for this. I am still looking for this to break to the upside and make another high. And then I'm looking for a major correction to happen. All right, a major correction. Now this breakout to the upside, I'm still willing to say, maybe we come for the lows one more time to retest the neckline of the introverted head and shoulders. You know, something like this. Come down to like 67.5, 67.4. We have some nice supports down there. But I'm still looking for a move to the upside. And when we get that move to the upside, guys, then, we need to realize that we will have a nice drive of bullish, uh, bearish divergence on the daily time frame here, right? A nice daily uh, bearish divergence here, and you know potentially even forming the upside down Sam Bankman Fried bearish man boo pattern on the chart, whereas the price is getting higher over time. Sam Bankman Fried, the money flow. And the, and the boobs are both getting lower over time, right? And so we would have that in confluence with a weekly red dot having confirmed a few weeks ago, which historically speaking means sideways and down. So in general, I am looking for a big pump above 75K to happen, uh, followed by a big correction to the high 40s, mid 50s. Basically, I'm looking to come back and retest this very important support resistance flip right here. All right, this is a very, very important level here because for a number of reasons, but we can see the importance of this level going back to the previous bull market. It was support in the previous bull market and resistance in the previous bull market, resistance in the bear market, resistance in our current bull market. And so now that we've broken out of that, 
I would I would not be surprised if we do something like this, right? Get people very bare, very bullish, big correction down, having happens around that this time as well. And then we get another big push to the upside, right? This is kind of my overall plan right now for Bitcoin. And on the daily time frame, okay, what I really want to see here for going on full all in, right? All in. When I say all in, I don't mean all in, all right? But I mean entering into a nice big swing trade. What I want to see on the daily market cipher B is I want to see it coming down below, um, ideally below this this 60 line right here, right? Very oversold wave on market cipher B. I want to see something like this, man. Obviously, we're not going to see money flow that low, but if we see a big bit boy green dot, all right, on market cipher B with an oversold wave for me. That is, all right, it's time to long the dang farm, okay? Because this is called a hidden bullish divergence. It's a continuation pattern in an uptrend. Let me show you what I mean. If you have an established trend line, right? And the price comes down to make a higher low on the trend line, right? We're looking at an uptrend. So we're looking for higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Price comes down to make a higher low in a macro uptrend and your oscillator is making a lower low. This is called a hidden bullish divergence and it's a macro continuation pattern in an uptrend. So if you see this in a bull market, this means swing trade time. So if we see that again, as price comes down to the same trend line, that to me, it's time to go long, baby, low leveraged, long trade, all right? Some of the best trades I made in the last bull run were, you know, these oversold waves on the daily after the halving. I mean, those are, those are where, when you wanna do it, right? I mean, look at this, right? Uh, September 2020, that was the first time we got this opportunity. The price made a higher low in this uptrend. The oscillator made a lower low, and then that was bam, right? And then we saw it actually happen again right here, right? Price made a higher low, and the oscillator made a much lower low, and then bam, we get that big move to the upside, right? In fact, this one right here, this January green dot, this was... Uh, you know, one of the, one of my juiciest swing trades of the last bull market, right? Um, yeah, I mean, t technically speaking, we didn't really have that here, but this was, this was also a, a, a nice trade. But anyway, that's what I'm looking for right now, because I look at us right now, um, you know, we're, we're right around, we're right around this, this time right here, right? We're, we're like, we're right in this kind of area right now where we can be looking for those macro signals based on the four year cycle. And if you're one of the people that says, Jason, the four year cycle is broken. Okay. You know, I'm not going to argue with that. You could be right. Okay. But I'm, I'm making my plans as if the four year cycle is not broken. And if I'm stupid for that, I'm stupid for that. Right. You know, what can I say? What can I say? You know? But that's kind of what I'm looking at right now with uh, with the Bitcoin price. And so, yeah, I do think we're going to see 50K. But I think I think it's more probable right now that we get a big push to the upside first uh, above 75K, maybe to toward the $80,000 level, because remember, the $80,000 level is a very important level. If we take a look at let's remove our drawings here, right? If we take a look at some of these targets that we have based on Fibonacci extension levels, Let's take a fib trend based fib extension and we'll take it from the low of the last bull market, right? Of the last bear market, I'm sorry, to the top of the last bull market, to the bottom of the most recent bull market. Hang on, we've got to adjust this a bit here. There we go. Yeah, we can see 81K. 81K is our technical one to one Fibonacci extension. So somewhere above 75, between 75 and 81K. I expect us to top out a little bit, right? Right around this box. And then I expect us to get a, a bit of a pullback, coming back down to test that 50, let's say the $50,000 area. And then we can shoot for some of our higher targets in the uptrend, which for me, I'm, I'm shooting for the 1.618 FIB for, the, for a bull market top. 
uh, around $120,000 Bitcoin. So that's that's going to be a really nice potential gain right there. We're talking about you know 150% for Bitcoin, which is good for Bitcoin. Obviously, some of these altcoins, you know, they they do crazy things. All right, like like this one, man. Like Om Nom. Shout out to whoever told me about Om Nom, man. That was crazy. Um, that was crazy. Yeah, that's a crazy one, man. All right, shout out to everybody in the chat. Wow, we got 1,400 people in here. Uh, let's see if we can't get a thousand likes. Uh, we didn't hit our time limit. Well, look, we'll give it another five minutes. All right, we've been streaming 38 minutes. Let's give it another five minutes to get a thousand likes so we can do a one thousand dollar giveaway. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for five minutes. Everyone like the video if you want a thousand dollars. All right, shout out to everybody in the chat. All right, shout out to Jelly Bean, shout out to Ric Flair with the super chat. What do I think of Doge? We could check out Doge, man. Shout out to Memory Man, 20 days until the having. Shout out to Joe Potter. Um, why am I saying we're in this kind of area if you were saying before that we were in a bear market rally? Um, well, because we're too close to the having now. We're too close to the having now, right? Um, so, I consider it the bear market until the having, all right? Let's put it that way. So, technically, I, I would still say this is a bear market rally. But we have to let the charts dictate our view, and that's going to change over time, right? That's going to change over time. So my original thesis for Bitcoin was that we were going to get a move up to the Fibonacci golden pocket like we did every single cycle, and we were going to get a 40% pullback like we did every single cycle, right? So my original thesis was that this short trade, this short trade that I took and that I made $10,000 on, I could have made 60K, but I was expecting lower. I thought this was going to take us back down toward the 30K region, and that was going to be our big pre-having pullback like we got every single other cycle. That did not happen, okay? So now I have to change my bias. And now I have to say the pullback that I was expecting to be 40% was only 22%, all right? So in hindsight now, I can see that my idea was wrong. All right, so now we have to change with the times. And this is this is one of the things that, you know, I, look, I'm not here to say I'm the best trader in the world because I'm not even close to that. But if you want to be a good trader, you need to change your bias when new information is presented to you on the chart. That's just how it is. All right, that's just how it is. We're not here to make predictions, right? We're here to trade the charts. And if you guys follow my channel, you know I do trade the charts, right? When did I admit I was wrong? When we reclaimed $40,700, when I saw the reclaim of this level, I said, I'm going long. Gabe, I told everyone in the Casper crew as well, I'm going long here, all right? And so we longed it, right? So we changed. We changed what the charts are telling us, okay? So um, that's the thing. Predictions, we can't really make predictions. It's all based on probabilities, right? If I'm expecting lower and then I see something on the chart, like a reclaim of massive support, then I have to say, I'm wrong. Let's switch bias, right? So that's what you got to do. And so right now, the next the next opportunity I see for a big pullback is going to be putting in another high and then coming back down to test our, uh, our, our key support, our key support around this zone, all right? Around this zone. And so if we don't get it, we don't get it, right? If we don't get it, we don't get it. But, you know. Look, if you're in the Casper crew, you are getting the the cutting edge market updates multiple times a day between me, Boy and K-Pax and White Phoenix. You guys know what's going on. All right. So, you know, these are real time markets. These are real time markets. You know, this is the most, the most recent trade given in the Casper crew on Friday, right? Set up, given in advance. I told everyone I'm long and boom, here we are. And 
we are at key resistance. So look, if you're in this trade, don't let it be a loser now. We're up. We're up. All right. We are up. All right. Gave the setup in advance from 62.3. And this is also the other trade I'm in as well right here. Gave the setup from uh, 69K last week, right? Now we're in the trade. So look, I can make predictions and I could talk about bear market rallies and this and that. But when push comes to shove, we look at the chart and we trade what we see in real time. And that's what you got to do, right? That's what you got to do. And if you want to learn those skills, take the courses, join the Casper Pro VIP Discord because you will learn so much and it is cheap relatively speaking you got other discord groups out there trading groups that charge way more for way less they charge hundreds of dollars they don't they don't even do anything <laughs> i'll be honest with you especially some of these ict groups out there uh all right let's see did we get a thousand likes dang it no uh dang it no we didn't get a thousand likes all right we did not get a thousand likes all right let me check on our chat and our super chats up in here god bless you all shout out to thing book shout out to crypto man what are my thoughts on ton usdt telegram coin we'll check it out and we'll check out doge as well for our man rick flair all right let's check out ton usdt Well, you know, all I can say is this, guys, all right? We were saying, last time we looked at Ton, that we have a, a bullish kind of uh, ascending triangle pattern, and essentially anywhere within the triangle is a good place to be getting in before the break, right? We have gotten the break. We have gotten the break. And yeah, that's looking really bullish. Right, we have a really nice trigger wave that's confirmed on the weekly, and we've gotten a nice move to the upside from this. All right, so 100%. What would I look for now? Well, I would want to see maybe a retest on this. So let's pull our fibs. Yeah, so right now for me, if we get a retest of this coming back down to the two dollar and 75 cent level, then that is what I would I would look to get in right now. That would be a beautiful, beautiful, too good to be true kind of a, a play right there but that's absolutely beautiful all right let's check out doge doge coin all right so doge man is about to squeeze breaking out of resistance if you're a very aggressive trader which i am not oh man if you're an aggressive trader i would say this is a bullish kind of break right here i am not an aggressive trader but but hear me out I would never take this play, all right, because I don't trade this way. I don't. I don't. But we have to we have to think to ourselves that these highs are begging to get taken out. They are begging to get taken out, right? And if we're going to look at this last high that we made here as a resistance and we're looking at this as a breakout and a retest, then this to me is a confirmed breakout and retest and we can shoot for the high. All right, now I would not take this play because this is not my style of trading. I don't like to trade a breakout uh, like this. But Doge looks good to me. Let's look at the weekly. I do hold a lot of Doge on spot. Remember, the more these coins pump, the more chance there is you're, you're at the top, right? Weekly still looks like there could be more upside here. The daily has a bearish dip, but money flow getting thicker. So this is a really nice bottom that we made here as well. Okay, I'm not, I, like I said, I am not interested in buying this, but I'm just, I'm just showing why this looks so bullish to me. We had established some clear lows down here and we just basically came to stop hunt those lows, printed a nice continuation uh, trigger on the daily and now we've actually made another higher high closing the daily candle above and now it looks like we're actually breaking out and retesting this old range high right 
it looks really good to me and I would I would I would say if I had to if I was a betting man I would bet on doge hitting higher prices okay I would not buy doge here because I do not think it's worth the risk <laughs> but if I had to bet in a direction I would bet to the upside but again just because you think price is gonna go a certain way doesn't mean you have a valid trade setup you know I think that's what's so key just because you think price is gonna do certain thing doesn't mean you have a valid trade setup. Like for example, you know, Omnom the other day, whoever in the chat, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. It looked really bullish. And I said to myself, and I said to all of you watching, yeah, this looks good. I'm only interested if we take out and we stop hunt all these people, right? Well, and I set an alert, said buy Omnom, LOL. And I set a little limit order. Um, <laughs> Om Nom came down and we did just that, right? So just because you think price is gonna go up doesn't mean you have an entry, right? I was bullish on Om Nom here. I said, you know what? For me, a good entry is a pullback. So for Doge, it's tough because we've already had a pullback. So I, we would need to wait and wait and see a little while before we get another kind of entry on dog, dog, doggy, dog coin on regular Doge. All right, so Bitcoin guys, from the long setup that we gave, on Friday is coming back, right? Remember, we're at key resistance. We got the Fibonacci 618, all right? The Fibonacci 618 right here. This is a very, very key level. And as many of you know, the Fibonacci 618, her name is 618, my high school crush. I had a huge crush on this chick back in high school, all right? I thought that she liked me. I didn't realize I was in something called the friend zone. And she was actually just using me to graduate high school because I would let her copy all my tests and I would let her copy my homework and I would carry her books to class. I thought we were going to get matching Ben coin tattoos and live happily ever after off, off our crypto degen games. But she had other plans. So when I asked her on a date, she said, Jason, I do like you, but not like that. She rejected me, right? Now, again, the reason why she rejected me mostly is, is as you guys know, right? Some of you guys know girls right? They're only into bad guys. They're not into nice guys, right? So same with her. She was into bad guys like this guy down here, Sam Bagman fried She was into Sam Bagman fried That's why she wouldn't date me. But here's the thing. Sam Bagman fried is now in jail for the next 25 years. And Six Juanita is now confronted with the dilemma. Either I am alone for the rest of my life for the next 25 years, or I settle for Jason Casper. Now, as we take a look at the Bitcoin chart here, all right, let's go down to the one hour. Let's remove everything. All right. As we take a look at the one hour here, remember, let's go ahead and pull our fib from high to low. Remember, the reason why she was into Sam Bagman fried was because of his body, right? She was very shallow. She was all about looks. And what she really liked about him was his upside down, uneven man boots, right? AKA bearish divergence. Now the question is, do we see a bearish divergence on this chart? The answer is no, we do not. Why is there no bearish divergence here? Because SBF in prison, all right? He's in prison. We don't see bearish divergence. In fact, we see the SBF in prison pattern. The FBS in prison pattern where as, wait, hang on. <laughs> that actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. We see the SBF in prison pattern. What's the SBF in prison pattern? As the price is getting higher, all right? As the price is getting higher, so are the people in the mugshot, right? That's bullish. Look, SBF and then this other guy whose face we will not mention, right? That's bullish, okay? So let's see what happens here, right? We're bouncing from VWAP, all right? We're bouncing from VWAP. And uh, yeah, the next major resistance we have, I mean, really, here's the thing, guys. If we can reclaim this box, we are we are gonna see Bitcoin smash a new high. All right, I've been saying this for too long here. I still gotta stick to my guns. All right, if there's one thing I do here, I stick to my guns. All right, we've been saying literally for two weeks now, since we longed Bitcoin way back in the day, this box, this white box right here that we've been long since, literally from long in the bottom, from the setup given in advance in the Casper crew, that, uh, <laughs> that once we reclaim this area, Bitcoin's gonna smash through a new all-time high. All right, gonna smash through a new all-time high. Whew. 
Man, crazy stuff. Uh, any codes to join the group? There's no codes to join the group. Um, but I, look, I do think it's worth the value. I really do. I'm not just saying that because it's my own group. I think it's the most valuable for the money, the most valuable trading group out there. For the amount of value you get and the amount of uh, traders in there showing you what they're doing, telling you what they're doing, giving you not signals, telling you what they're doing, not what you should do, because it's not financial advice and we all trade demo accounts only. You get live streams from these people. You get to see their mindset. You get to know why they're doing what they're doing. You get to ask them questions. We have a questions channel, 24 seven questions about trading. We have a whole beginner's course in there. Plus we're the friendliest, most active trading group out there. All right. But there's no discounts to get in, maybe in the future. See, Simo says the Discord is a good value, I'm telling you. All right. So we got some other super chats in here. We got to shout out our super chats, baby. All right, we got to shout out our super chats. Again, maybe 618 is going to go out on a date with us today. The VIP is priceless. Shout out to uh, Desert Eric, says I'm all in on Casper Crew. The fish says, yeah, demo only. VIP pays for itself. If not, you're doing something wrong. If I have 1,200 in my bank account, should I take 600 to join the group? It doesn't cost 600 to join the group. Uh, do mods get access? You know, they should. They should, John Plony. They should, man. They should. Shout out to Gabriel. In, in the group, in the VIP, and learn too much already. All right. How to join? Just jasoncaspertrading.com. All right. All right. Shout out to Jellybean. Shout out to Bitcoin Pumping. Let me get a handle. All I want to see is another blue candle. And we're going to check out our super chats. God bless you all. All right. Fernando wants to take a look at Shami. Shami. Is that, is that even a, a coin? Uh, I see ham USDT. I don't see hammy and I don't see chamois with a money sign either. I don't see it. But thank you for the super chat. I'm sorry, I just don't see that ticker. All right, shout out to Josh from Japan. Let's take a look at Jasmine, all right? Because many of you know, I did buy Jasmine live on stream. And if any of these coins that you guys are asking me to do look good, I will buy them live on this stream. All right. All right. So yeah, Jasmine, we got the breakout of our falling wedge pattern. And, you know, I hate to say this, guys, but for me, the only place I'm interested in buying Jasmine right now is way back down at uh, 12, 12, 7 to around 8190 and I know a lot of people think we're never gonna get that maybe we won't but we do have a weekly red dot I would love a bit more of a pullback I would love to come back down and retest the support resistance flip right support back here in May, March 2022 consolidation in the summer of 22 and then resistance consistently throughout the bear market flipped now if we come back down to the support this is a major buy zone on Jasmine and I will gladly buy some jasmine on spot here gladly put thousands of dollars into jasmine here all right and then i will like to take it to a new high man all right who knows who knows coming up maybe another 1500 percent. i think that's a i think this is a really good play right here on jasmine i think it's a really good play right here shoot for at least this high all right we'll shoot for 900 percent, but i'd say 1500 percent is what I would look for. Now turn it off log scale and you can see this is this is really a nice play, right? We turn on logarithmic, you know, we're just coming down to the golden pocket retest. That's all we're doing, golden pocket retest on Jasmine. All right. Shout out to call sign RX. He says, what's up, man? Any layer two spot holds you recommend? Um, Crap, you guys can't see my freaking screen, can you? I'm such an idiot, hang on. I'm, I'm an imbecile. 
This is what I'm talking about with Jasmine. I'm sorry, guys. Please forgive me. Jason, you're losing it again. Come on, get it together. This is what I'm talking about with Jasmine, man. All right. Jasmine, a pullback to this support resistance flip. All right. Support, consolidation, resistance, 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 retest. We're looking at 1500% gain right here around the 12,590 zone. 12,590 zone into our green box. This is a major buy zone for me on Jasmine on spot. All right. I'm going to set an uh, alert here to buy Jasmine. Now, notice I said BYE Jasmine because although I am going to buy Jasmine here, I need to be aware that it might not go in my favor, right? So it's a double meaning in buy Jasmine, right? Either buy as in purchase Jasmine or buy as in goodbye Jasmine. It's been nice knowing you, but now we're going to zero. All right. Let's see. Sorry for the wrong screen, guys. Uh, are there any layer two spot holes I recommend? I'll be honest with you, call sign RX. I can't, I cannot speak to that, all right? I don't even know what really layer twos are. I know they're like, they run on top of other blockchains, but I don't know which ones are layer two, layer one, layer three, I don't know. I'm not the guy to ask that, all right? So, all right. All right, so Fernando, he says that Shami will be the next whiff, so get in now while you still can, all right? So if you are wanna follow Fernando, Thank you for the super chat, man. I can't find the ticker, but he says it's the next whiff, all right? Uh, shout out to uh, Kamayu. Does your strategy work well with stocks as well? Um, yeah, so the only, I, I don't really trade stocks. I do trade indices. So I'll trade uh, NASDAQ and SPX uh, primarily. But yeah, my strategy does work with those as well. And I trade that right now on Bing X using Tether as margin. I haven't traded them in a while. I'll be honest with you. The last time I was in an SPX trade was, I don't know. When, when SPX hit a new all-time high, I closed out that trade, that long trade. Um, all right. Shout out to Holt574. Want to share that om um, om. Um. Are you talking about the... Uh, that altcoin. Who, who's the one that showed that to me? All right. Shout out to Golden Pocket for the super chat. Buy, check out and buy Cresco Wallet, CRE. All right, let's check out CRE. All right, let's check out CRE. Bitcoin pumping. Let me smell your sandals. Let's check out CRE. It's called uh, Carry. All right, so look, uh, on the weekly time frame, we're in somewhat of an ascending channel here. You could say this was the channel. And we came to the high, to the low, to the high, to the midpoint. Now we're breaking out. All right, let's go to the daily. Now look, here's the thing about coins like this. Low liquidity, low, low liquidity. Uh, if you're bullish on it, you know, I can't tell anybody what to do and what not to do. But as a trader, I have to say, where would I want to buy this thing? Uh, so right now, I would want to buy this thing. Right here. This is where I would want to buy this. Yep, that's where I would want to buy it. Basically, coming back down to the high volume node, value area high, I would like that a lot. All right. If you're bullish on it, you know, I can't tell you what to do because, look, I don't know. I just do not know whether or not uh, it's going to pump from here because there's not much, there's not much to analyze technically on this chart, right? There's not too much to analyze on this chart technically. All right, Bitcoin, guys, is coming past our, our, our SOS line here, all right? It's coming past our SOS line. All right, shout out to Jellybean. All right, it's on Uniswap. All right, on wrapped Ethereum, says Golden Pocket. All right. 
on Wrath Ethereum. I mean, it's kind of the same deal, but it is a different looking chart. There's not much data here, but uh, yeah, I, I can't. I mean, look, we're bouncing from the 786 area. I don't have much to analyze here. So it's one of those things. If you're bullish, it looks good right now. <laughs> All right, we had multiple drive of, of, of bull dip on the four hour into the 786. You know, we had the. Uh, we got the pig nipple divergences on the four hour. It does look good, technically, on the chart. I don't know about fundamentally. It looks really good, actually. It looks really good. It looks bullish. It looks very bullish. Can I post the alt charts in Discord? Um, sure. I mean, all the ones that I'm interested in actually buying, I posted it in the Discord already. All right, if I'm not interested in them, I don't know, should I even post them? Max says, why aren't you in church? Are you in church, Max? If you are, why are you on YouTube while the pastor's preaching, bro? All right, um, yeah, dude wants everything to drop 40% before buying again. Yes, Jeremy, yes, man. I mean, look, yeah, absolutely, bro. And look, if you follow me, you know I buy stuff when it's down. And uh, I don't want to buy high. You know, I'm, 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 I don't want to buy high. Do you? Do you want to buy high? I mean, look, I day trade Bitcoin. I don't day trade these altcoins, man. I swing trade them. I'm trying to put in a little bit of money and make huge gains on these. And there's plenty of opportunities. So why am I going to gamble away a couple thousand bucks buying something high? You know, and if you want to do it a different way, good, you know, good. But that's just not how I do it. You know, everyone needs to have their own strategy. Shout out to Holt574. All right, it was you. It was Holt574 that asked to check on Nom Nom. But you looked at Doge, eat Doge. Oh, that's so funny. I looked at the wrong coin. Om Nom? Isn't Om Nom Doge, eat Doge? The ticker is Om Nom. Om Nom. Right? Well, thank you, Holt754. Shout out to Jojo Sagogo, who's freestyling to the background music. I'm seriously freestyling. You are too when you talk. I hope you're recording. We should freestyle together. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Well, shout out to Holt574 for this juicy, uh, apparently wrong coin setup here. All right. Can we check out CAW? Yeah. All right, we can check out CAW. Here we go, baby. Bitcoin. All right, so here's what I think about CAW. It hasn't really changed market structure here, right? We are still consolidating in something like this. So if you are bullish on it, then now is the time to be stacking it. All right, now is the time to be stacking it. It's that simple. If you're bullish on it, and I don't know what it is, okay? It could be a rug pull coin I don't know but if you're bullish on it now is the time to be stacking it you know we have ourselves a really good risk to reward ratio right here you know we're seeing uh let's check out the daily yeah I would say stack in the range stack in the range wait for the break you know stack in the range wait for the break Can we check out FTM? Alex B, yeah, let's check out FTM real quick.
yeah, so this is my overall thoughts on Phantom. Like, you know, we've had the, uh, the inverted head and shoulder. We're coming to resistance. So for me, this is this is what I want to see. A move back down to the uh, the Fibonacci Golden Pocket retest, support resistance split around 64 cents, and then a break. Or if you're if you like to buy tops, then wait for a breakout and a retest of this local resistance, right? Because if we can reclaim this level of about a dollar 13, then we're back inside the old range, right? We're back inside the old range. And then we could shoot for a new high, which is going to be about 230%, right? So two opportunities for FTM, wait for the pullback to around 64 cents or wait for a breakout and retest of $1.13 and then look for a new high. That's kind of what I see for FTM. All right, Bitcoin struggling here a little bit. Bitcoin struggling just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Shout out to OG Blockchain at church. Bro, get off YouTube, man, if you're at church. But God bless you. All right. We got some super chats in the house. All right. Shout out to Satisfying for the super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Can Solana make a new all-time high? Yes, of course it will. It will. Um, yeah, I think we, I think we could see it. I think we could see it soon. All right. All right. They mean crow with knife. Uh, Draconova. Ka, same ticker as the one you looked at. Whoa, was it the wrong ticker? What do I think will happen when Asia will open? I think, all right, that we're gonna, I, I don't, look, I don't know. I'm much less confident in the pump than I was last week. What I want to happen is I want to pump and then correction. That's what I want to happen, all right? That's what I want to happen. I'm looking for new highs here, all right? I'm looking for new highs. All right, shout out to Arabong Bizdak. Jay, check out one cat. It looks bullish. All right, let's check out one cat. We'll check out one cat. Let's check it out. Thank you so much for the super chat. One cat. So we, we, we are not going to go to the weekly because all we have is this, the daily. Yeah, it looks very bullish to me, actually. Hidden bullish dip right now on the daily with money flow getting thicker. Looks to me like a very nice bottom bullish divergence, multiple drive of daily bullish divergence, a change in market structure. Where do we come down to test? Man. We front ran golden pocket. So look, all right, two things here I would say. Obviously, you guys know as a trader, I have to say, let's wreck everybody who's long from this zone. Right? That's that's the ideal entry. But let's see. We have a hidden bullish dip right here on the daily. Let's go to the four hour. Hidden bullish div also on the four hour money flow getting thicker. Um, regular bullish div followed by hidden bullish div. Looks like a pretty nice bottom to me. You know, we have to understand that we could take the liquidity below, but this so far 
looks like a nice bottom, right? Change of structure in the sense that we had our high, our low, then we made our high, we made our higher low, then we made a slightly higher high, right? So local change of structure, nothing too crazy. We would have wanted to take out that other high, but we didn't. Uh, so look, if I was looking to build a position on one cat, I would say based on the daily and the four hour, I would deploy a little capital here, but I would want and desire and hope for a, a bigger move down, right? Into this box would be a major buy zone for me. But um, yeah, it does look bullish. But look, here's the thing. A chart can look bullish and bullishness can play out. And oftentimes when charts look bullish and we have unfinished business, we, we go hunt that, right? I mean, I remember people were asking me, you know, back in back uh, a week and a half ago when I was looking for this long, Jason, like, do you think we're going to come back down here? Things are already looking so bullish already. And I'm like, I don't know if we're going to come down here, but if we do, I'm long in it. And bam, baby, that's how we, that's how we make these juicy gains. You know what I'm saying? So same deal with one cat. Like, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but if it does happen, it would be a very good high probability entry point on spot because things are looking very bullish and we just got a big dump, right? When things look bullish and you get a dump, that's when you buy the dip. When things look bullish and you buy the dump, that's when you buy the dip. Man, I just turned $2,000 into $5,000 on Omnom and all I did was set a limit order. <laughs> That's insane, man. I should I should get into more of these Shite coins, as they're called. You know, stop wasting my time with Bitcoin. Just kidding, I'll never stop trading Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. Can we look at Bohm? Yeah, I bought Bohm. You know, Bohm, as you know, shout out to Satisfying again for the 99 cent super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. All right. All right, Chimp has a question. Chimp, what's your question, Chimp? What's your question, Chimp? Ask your question, Chimp. What's your question, Chimp? What is your question, man? All right, so Bohm, look guys, I don't know. I bought a whole bunch of Bohm because we broke out of a resistance. I've been holding it. All right, I've been holding it. And basically, let's see here. My Bohm is up right now. Five percent, all right, I'm up five percent on that Bohm that I, that I got, all right. About five percent on Bohm. So, you know, about five percent on Bohm. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, what's Chimp's question? Chimp, he forgot. He forgot his question. LOL, Chimp. You're so funny, bro. <laughs> Bro spams the chat like seven times. I just have one question. <laughs> All right, bro. God bless you, Chimp, man. I know how it is, man. Look, I know. I know how it is. Try and get eight hours of sleep a night. It'll help. It'll help. All right, shout out to Ondo. Can we look at Ondo? Everyone's talking about Ondo. All right. Ondo, Ondo. Bye, Ondo. Everyone says. Long Ondo, buy a condo says Luke from Toro's Crypto. Um, yeah, let's check out Ondo. So look, Ondo, yeah, last time we were looking at it, I wanted to dip back down, support resistance flop, we didn't get it, okay? Four hour, looking pretty nice here. Hidden bullish divergences. Um, man, all right, you guys know. You guys know the deal. Right, what's the deal? You guys already know. Man, I'll tell you, that's the deal for me on Ondo. That's where I would long Ondo to buy a condo. 
Yep, that's where I would long on to buy a condo. Value area high, golden pocket, liquidity grab. Let's pull the whole range. Yeah. Yep, yep. Long ondo buy a condo. Yeah. 80 cents, 75 to 80 cents is where I would want to buy ondo. You know? It's a 17% pullback. But yeah, you know, wreck everybody and then and then buy it. Look, here's the thing. Whenever we're presented with a bull flag, guys, you always have three options. Alright? Option number one is accumulate within, right? And wait for the break. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. I'm not gonna hate on that. Option number two, the one I like, is wait for everybody to get wrecked and then long. That's the option I like, right? That's the uh, that's the option I like, right? When you see that pattern, it's very high play out rate. This is exactly what I just have happened over here, right? We had this, right? We, we wanted to basically wreck everybody and then long, right? But this is not always guaranteed to happen, right? So that we have two options. Option number three is you wait for a breakout and a retest, all right? Which is also acceptable. You have to decide what you like to do based on your own risk management and all that, right? Option number three is we wait for confirmation by waiting for a breakout and a retest and then that's where we enter, right? Those are literally our three options. Accumulate within, wait for everyone to get wrecked, or wait for the breakout and the retest, all right? My favorite is wait for everyone to get wrecked. My second favorite is actually wait for the breakout and retest, which you might find surprising, but the reason why is because for me, a breakout and a retest is more confirmation than accumulating within the bull flag, because how do we know this isn't just gonna go down and stay down? Like, we don't really, right? But a breakout and a retest is now showing us, all right, this is legit now. Let's get in, right? But my ideal situation is always wreck everybody and then long. That's my ideal situation. Because people look at these patterns form and they're, they're buying here, they're buying here, and it's just a recipe for the market makers to wreck them so the market makers can buy at lower prices, right? It's just recipe for it. So that's how I feel about Ondo. Long Ondo, buy a condo. Are we Dark Knight rich yet? Nah, not yet. Not yet, but we're still hodling, all right? We're still hodling. Dark Shield, Dark Shield. All right, Trump coin, Trump coin. Look, I've been saying for a long time that Trump coin is good to buy, all right? I've been saying for a long time that Trump coin is good to buy. All right? Whenever politics get involved, people get very passionate. Whenever people get passionate, it means uh, coins will probably pump. So let's check out Trump coin, all right? The Orange Man special. Man, Trump coin is taking a massive dump. MAGA coin is taking a huge dump. Getting me interested in some MAGA. All right, getting me interested in some MAGA right here. 12 hour green dot. Let's check out the four hour. Uh, bullish divs here on the four hour. Yeah, I'm interested in MAGA coin, guys. Call me a fool, all right? But people, people just love Trump, man. People just love him so much. They think he's amazing. They think he's so great. They think if only Trump were the president, then America would change forever. And you say, that's not true. And they say, oh yeah, has Trump ever been president? How do you know? And you say, Trump has been president. And they're like, oh snap, I forgot. You're like, yeah, we're in more debt than ever before, less freedom than ever before, more divided as a country than ever before. You know, more genetic experimentation on the population than ever before. They're like, oh, dang, well, if he gets in a second time, then, then things will change. Oh. Okay, well, in that case, let's long this bullish falling wedge pattern here. All right? Let's long the bullish falling wedge pattern. That's how I see it. You know, money flow, getting a little bit higher. You know what, guys? I'm going for it. All right? I'm about to get on an FBI watch list. 
because I'm about to buy me some MAGA. An extremist cryptocurrency that threatens our very democracy. Because, you know, for some reason we're no longer a constitutional republic. We are a democracy. Let me head on over to good old MEXC, the best place to buy altcoins, all right? And let's buy us some MAGA, some good old Trump coin, all right? Gonna get some good old Trump coin. Let's get some Trump, baby. Let's buy us some Trump. Let's put, I'm gonna put 1500 just to start. We're gonna, we're gonna dip our toes into Trump here. By the way, guys, if you are on MEXC, link in the description, 0% fees for spot trading. And we're gonna dip our toes into Trump, all right? My whole family's democratic. All right, so it's a little extreme for me now to be buying MAGA coin. Just did it, all right? Step number one, all my Facebook friends now hate me, okay? How could you, Jason? How could you? You're betraying us, Jason, all right? All my friends from college, you know? We all got our degrees together in trans, non-carbon, binary, emission, gender studies. They hate me now. I'm on their blacklist. But you know what? We're here to make money. All right? We just bought us some MAGA. Some MAGA. Let's check it out. MAGA. We're already up 100 bucks, baby. We already up 100 bucks, baby. That's right. Shout out to MAGA. Man, Joe Biden is so pissed right now that we are making gains off of Donald Trump, baby. All right, Joe Biden's so pissed. He just made a new holiday today to honor all my friends who I went to college with. Now he's pissed. We're making money on Trump, baby. All right. Is it the wrong coin? All right. There's a lot of MAGAs. <laughs> Whoops. Did I just buy the wrong Trump coin? <laughs> oh, well, I just made $100 on the wrong Trump coin. We're going to let this thing simmer. Man, we just made $261, baby. On Trump, $273. On Trump coin, baby. We are raking in the profits right now, live on YouTube. All right? This is, we are making money faster than Operation Warp Speed right here. Let me roll up my sleeves, baby, because we're about to make those juicy gains. All right. I got the right one, wrong one, right one. All right. Which one is it? Trump coin? Three ninety-five is the price. That one. Let's see which one. All right, MAGA coin is. Yeah, yeah. It looks like I got the wrong coin. I got the wrong coin, guys. All right, I got the wrong coin. All right. Okay, I made two hundred bucks on the wrong coin, man. That's that's what makes America great again. All right. That's what makes. <laughs> what other MAGAs are? There? Hang on. Let, let, let's let's try. Let's see. All right. Is it Trump USDT? There's so many dang Trump coins. <laughs> What the heck? All right, what the heck? We got Baby Trump. We got MAGA Trump. This one, I think, is the one I was supposed to buy here. This is the one I was supposed to buy. All right, let's dip our toes into Trump. We're going to double dip into Trump, baby. We're going to put another 1500 We're double dipping into Donald Trump right here, baby. Mm. Donald Trump. Good old DT, baby. Let's see. MAGA. All right, so look, I'm up 500 bucks on the wrong Trump. Or I'm up 500 bucks on the wrong Trump. And I'm up right now $7 on the right Trump. All right, Let, let's go back to the wrong Trump real quick. All right, because I, I, I think I might just, we're up 17%, baby. Oh, I just missed out. Look at that crazy wick. Ah. Oh. Now I just met. Okay, now we're back, baby. Five hundred dollars in profits. All right, let's let's see if we can. Let's try and set a limit order. 
Uh, I don't even know how, to, how the heck to limit out of this, man. You know? All right. This, this number doesn't even make sense to me. I don't even know what this is. Ah! All right, let's see. I, I, I have no idea how to... <laughs> <laughs> no idea how to get out of this coin, man. I have no idea how to get out of this coin because it's eight parenthesis eight eight. What the heck? <laughs> how do I do this? All right, I'm trying to I'm trying to get out of this coin here, man. Someone help me! I'm just an idiot YouTuber. I'm not even a trader. Oh, now we're down to a hundred dollars. Oh, no, Matt Trump! Oh, Trump! Come on, man! I've, come on, man! Come on, man! <laughs> Come on, man, I voted for you. All right? Sheesh, man. Corn Pop was a real bad dude. Get me to buy the wrong Trump coin. Sheesh, man. That pump was my order, probably. All right, can I, can I even mark it out of it? I don't think I can even mark it out. I don't think there's enough liquidity here. You know? I don't think there's enough liquidity here to, to mark it out of MAGA. Well, at least Bitcoin has plenty of liquidity. <laughs> All right, at least Bitcoin has plenty of liquidity. All right. All right. All right. Man, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. You guys are awesome. <laughs> LOL. Javon, that's a Trump for you. Just ditch and leave you holding the bag. LOL. All right, right click the chart and click copy price. Thanks. All right, let's see if we can't get it back to that wick. Can I show my orders? Okay, we're, gonna, we're, 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 we're going for it big on this one, man. All right, we're going. We're going for bit for big on this one, all right? Come on, Trump. You haven't let me down so far. All right? You haven't let me down so far. You did audit the Fed. You did put the Clintons in jail. You know, all the things you said you would do. You did them. All right? So we're, we're waiting for you, Trump. Shout out to Blair Blair 321 Hey, Jason, getting a taste of the Shite Coin Casino. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be charting only on deck screener. <laughs> nah, nah, never, never, never. All right? Never, never. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get muted for saying that Trump was a bad presidente? No, you didn't get muted for that. You know what's funny? You know what's so funny? And ironic is like... If I make fun of the current president, I could technically like get shadow banned for it. But if I make fun of Trump... You know, YouTube loves when you make fun of Trump. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, now nah, you won't get banned for saying that Trump was a bad president. Don't say Hillary with a K. Yeah, that's probably not good to say. Yeah. All right, shout out to my man watching from the UK. Um, all right, I'm trying to let this take profit order get hit, man. Come on, Trump coin. Come on, Trump coin. Come on. I wonder if I could pump the price myself. No, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put more capital into this, this coin. All right. I'm not gonna put more capital into that coin. <laughs> yeah, Mark Harris. Yeah, like you, you. You can't talk about that for sure. You know. You can't talk about that for sure. All right, all right, enough of this Trump stuff, all right? Shout out to Aaron, he says, but in the end, none of the presidents matter, only Jesus. Amen to that, right? Amen to that. Politics, it's all theater, man. All right, Trump coin, it looks like, looks like, looks like this, this coin is not gonna, it's not gonna do what I want it to do, baby. All right, shout out to everybody in the chat. God bless you all. May God bless you all. Exactly, yeah. We're stuck with the mainstream candidates. They give you two choices. Two choices. That's it. You can choose 
It's the illusion of choice. You get to choose. And Mark Harris, like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I feel you, man, but like, <laughs> like, you know, I don't know if it's 100% true, but like, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. All right, wouldn't surprise me. Am I walking while trading? Yeah, yeah, I'm walking while trading, profit taker. We're walking, we're walking and trading. We're trading Trump coin, MAGA coin, all right? We're trying to make a quick 500 bucks on MAGA. Um, <clears throat> yeah, trading and walking. Come on, Trump coin. All right, while we're waiting for Trump coin, um, all right, all right. Come on, Trump MAGA coin. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so my man, Looney's cutie, I guess maybe man or woman, all right? It's impossible to tell on the internet these days. Looney's cutie says, can you please look at Dot? And Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, let's take a look at Insane Clown Posse because, you know, that is one I'm actually interested in, all right? We could look at Dot as well, all right? We could look at Dot as well. Shout out to Super Crypto. Yeshua is number one. Absolutely. That's why I'm, I'm apolitical. I just enjoy it for the theater of it. I enjoy it for the theater of it. You know, you have to appreciate, you have to appreciate the theater of politics. I mean, just recently, what's the most recent one? Biden made today, of all days, international, international, this kind of appreciation, you know? And it's like, bro, the only reason they did that is to mess with people like that's the only reason they did that politics is just all theater and it's supposed to get you riled up it's supposed to make you angry it's supposed to make you hate your fellow countrymen divide us so that we're easy to conquer easy to control but if you if you sit back relax and just enjoy it as as theater as, as just a show just a show what are they gonna what are they gonna think up next you know what what, what are they gonna think up next and you appreciate the humor in it and the comedy and the irony. That's that's what politics is for. Jesus is number one, he's king, right? All this other stuff is just political theater. <laughs> All right, so ICP. Look, it looks like we're breaking out. It looks like we're breaking out, you know? Uh, we have this bull flag. You guys know what I'm gonna say, right? Everyone knows what I'm going to say already. For me, you could long a break out here. I would rather wait to come back down and wreck everybody and then long, right? The, the two options, in my opinion, are breakout and retest, or wreck everybody and then bounce, you know? Those are the two options, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm shooting for high targets on ICP. Because here's the thing. Once we enter back... I mean, look. If we break out of our current level, guys, on ICP, these highs are going to get taken out very, very quickly. Right? Very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. And let's take a look at uh, DOT. All right? Also, DOT. I hold a lot of DOT. I think DOT is a good one for the... For the bull market in general. All right, this was my last plan for dot guys. So look, if you follow the channel, we gave the entry to the dollar. All right, but now here's what we gotta wait for. Right now, dot is coming up to a major support resistance flip at ten dollars. If we break out and retest ten dollars, in my opinion, we're gonna see fifty dollars. If we get a pullback from here, then it becomes a little bit tougher, but.
if we get a pullback from here, I would want us to come down and basically make a higher low. Right? I would want us to make a higher low. Um, I would want us to basically come back down and retest this historic level of support as support again at around $6.83. It was support once, and then we made a lower low, and now we've changed market structure. We come back down to make the higher low, and then bam. All right? That's what I see for getting into DOT, you know? That's what I see to get to DOT. Let's check on Bitcoin real quick. Oh man, look at this, guys. All right. MAGA coin. Let's let's see if we can limit out a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, let's let's see if we can front run our our level here. Come on, MAGA. What's my TP on this Bitcoin trade? I'll be honest with you. I'm shooting for a new high on this one, all right? I'm shooting for a new high on this one. I made like 45k last week trading Bitcoin, and so right now, all my, all these trades that you see are guaranteed winners, and so I'm just letting them run now. I'm just letting them run now, right? It's either I make 45k or I just keep letting them ride, baby. So obviously we're at resistance right here. Ah, oh, wrecked, wrecked. Wrecked on Trump coin. Ouch, man. All right. Wrecked on Trump coin. Do I long the 618 after a change in market structure? Yes, that's that's the best place to long the golden pocket, right? So if you have if you have something like this, right, where price is in a downtrend. And then all of a sudden, we get a change in market structure, right? And we take out the previous lower high. That's where you pull your fib from low to high and long the golden pocket, right? If you can see that. If you can see that. Man, look at that. We, we made and lost $700 on, on MagaCoin. Man. Man, talk about all the range of emotions. <clears throat> all right. All the range of emotions. But it, yeah, my so look, I, I if you're in the Casper crew, I, I told well, maybe if you're not in the Casper crew, I told everyone my plan for the current Bitcoin long trade is just to hold it in case of a new high because my personal trading situation is I made a lot of profit last week trading Bitcoin. <clears throat> this trade right now, if stopped out, I will lose nothing. And so for me, I'm gonna hold it just in case the pump. Right? I'm less confident in the pump this week than I was last week. I was I was really expecting when we made this low on Wednesday, I was expecting us to make a new high. Right, All things considered. I still would like to see a new high, but I am less confident in that happening now because it's been a week. Right, It's been a week. All right, let's check out Chainlink. <clears throat> let's check out Chainlink. Actually, before we look at Chainlink, we have to um, we have to look at our, for our man Frederick and Co. Every day, we have to look at Songbird. All right, let's look at Songbird.
All right, Songbird, to me, objectively speaking, looks extremely bullish. We've broken out of resistance with a retest, and we are heading toward a weekly money flow cross. It looks good to me. It looks really good to me. Yeah, it looks really good to me. Uh, for me, this is a buy. This is a buy. Songbird. Let's get some Songbird right now. This is this is a buy. <clears throat> yeah, let's buy some Songbird right now. Yeah, this is this is a buy. <clears throat> I like to look at this. I'm I'm gonna let this one marinate for a while here, guys. Or I'm gonna let this one marinate for a while here. I'm gonna let this one marinate because I think within the next few weeks we're gonna see a big move on Songbird. All right. Within the next few weeks, we're gonna see some, a, a, a move on on the Songbird here. What happened to my songbird? Oh, here it is. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. I think within the next few weeks we'll see we'll see songbird move. All right. My my maga rug pull. What about uh Korean Korean Korean? All right, let's check out Korean. <clears throat> So I don't like the way Kareem looks compared to the other because money flow is coming down on the weekly. Uh, let's check out the daily. So we had a pretty nice bottom here. And now we are getting a cup and handle-ish pattern. So let's pull some fibs. I'll be honest, I don't like the way the weekly looks right now. I would check back at this thing when we come back down to around the 12 cent area, 786 value area low of this rise. Assuming that this is gonna break up eventually, I'd wanna see some real nice bullish divs for me here. I don't really like the look of the four hour here. You know, I would, I would, I would, I would set an alert for around 12 cents and recheck at 12 cents. Can we look at INJ? Yeah, we could look at INJ. We could look at INJ.
So I have to say for INJ that to me, the obvious amazing setup is wreck everybody under this trend line. And look for a, a fake out and a move back up. And if we don't get the fake out, like you'd want to watch the chart and make sure that we actually did get a fake out, right? You'd want to make sure that we actually did get the fake out here. Um, so you'd want to see the price come below, dip below like this, and then get the reclaim. And if we don't get that, then you want to fill all these single prints and come down to this zone right here for a second opportunity to, to build a buy on this. The two places that I would be interested in. Obviously, it's like every other coin. Could we break out? Of course, we could break out. But, you know, it's just like the higher, the, the juicier setups are these ones here, you know? The juicier setups are those here. All right. All right, man. Trump coin is 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 not doing what I wanted to do. What's what's the real Trump coin doing? Let's see. We lost money. All right, we lost money on the real Trump. All right, we're gonna let real Trump marinate a little bit. All right, but we're down right now three dollars on on the real Trump. The fake Trump coin. We're up a little bit, but we were shooting for more. All right, we were shooting for more. Filecoin getting close to 10 bucks. Shout out to Gulf Coast Pest Control. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out to Crypto Coons. Holding it down with a wrench. I really appreciate you, man. God bless you. Link in AVAX. Link in a box. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll check out Link in a box. AVAX, I'm not too stoked on it. Yeah, I think it'll pump. But I'm not too stoked on it in the immediate. Chainlink, very bullish, but uh, in my opinion, it's not the best place to be buying either of these coins. <clears throat> so Chainlink has gotten the support resistance flip at four, at 15 bucks. Our next target for Chainlink, let me let me go to the Binance chart actually. All right. Yeah. So look, because we've gotten the support resistance flip here at 15 bucks, this is a valid plan. All right. Am I saying I would buy Chainlink here? No, I would rather wait for a pullback. Okay. But you know, along the way, we've been giving you guys the levels to be aware of. All right. We had the Casper crew level here. All right. This actually made for a nice short. And then we had the key support resistance flip where we bounced from and now we've broken out. So we've retested the Casper crew level now as support. And we've continued with bullish market structure. We're back inside the previous bull market value area low. So look, the upside potential here is looking good. However, bearish divergence on the weekly. I would rather see a bit more of a pullback here. Now, if we get a bit of a pullback here, what are we looking at? Ideally, for me, I would want to have us come back to the golden pocket 786 zone. Now, you know, the people laughing at me saying, he wants big pullbacks only, ha, 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 ha. All right, well, if you want to buy the top, you go for it. For me, I'd rather preserve my capital and deploy when I see a really good opportunity. So for me, a really good opportunity is coming back down into this box, right? And then continuing with the uptrend. That's a really, really good opportunity. Is it going to happen? Maybe, I don't know. But I don't want to buy here with bearish divergences on the weekly after a 400% move to the upside, right? You know, you buy things <laughs> with after a 400% move, I, I guarantee you it might work out once or twice, but do that 10 times and you're probably gonna end up in the red overall, you know? In the red overall. Man.
Man, can you believe it, guys? Maggot coin. I'm gonna see. I, I'm. I, I'm. I'm. I, I don't want to be in this coin. It's not. The, it's not even the coin I wanted. So. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that thing. This beat is a beat to rap on. This is a really hard beat to rap on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's too it's too syncopated for me to rap on it. I'm too I'm too white to rap on this beat. You know. Shout out to Remy who's bullish on spray tans. Talk about risk management. Yeah, make sure that you uh that you don't risk more than you should. Shout out to Carpus Media Inc. He's so young looking. Are you talking about me? Am I young? Why thank you. Appreciate that. Not bad for a 49 year old, you know? Not bad for a 49 year old. All right, Matic. All right, we could take out Matic, Matic. We could take a look at Matic, Matic. Polygon. All right, so Matic to me is a buy, you know? We've broken out, we're retesting uh, trend line. That's a buy for me, man. That's a buy. And then obviously, if we fall back in, we look for the the golden pocket. This is my setup on Matic, you know? I'm not 49, yeah, I am 49. I'm 49. Yeah, I'm 49, and I've been trading Bitcoin since 2003. So I've got the experience behind my age as well. <laughs> Shout out to Steak Sauce, got the treadmill a few days ago. Shout out to NNJ from Dubai. Why do I take one position for USDT for leverage and one in Bitcoin? Why not? Why not? I like to stack Bitcoin and Tether, you know? I like to stack Bitcoin and Tether. Bitcoin got the strugs, baby. Bitcoin got the strugs. Yeah, Matic looks good to me, guys. Matic looks good for, for a breakout, all right? Jasmine, we already looked at Jasmine, Sammy. So, you know, yeah, shout out to Lemon G. If you didn't know I was 49, doesn't the boomer humor give it away? Come on, guys. Bitcoin established until 2011. Oh, snap. Well, I'm so old, I guess my memory is fading me. Shout out to Aso Farts. He is risen. Jesus is risen. I'm pretty stoked to see my son-in-law melt faces tonight at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. That's cool, man. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. Yeah, I did get into Bitcoin in 2016. I'm not 49 either. Yeah, I'm not really 49, guys. I'm going to be 34. I'm going to be 34 soon. All right, which is very old to me. So if you're young, guys, if you're young, you're going to go real quick. Man, 
All right, shout out to our super chat, Sergio Onhill. Recently subscribed, you have good energy, man. Could you please let me know what charts tell you for IOTX? <clears throat> Yeah, let's check it out, man. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for the super chat. God bless you. All right, so yeah, here we are in the weekly. We've gotten that money flow cross. We've gotten a bullish break of resistance with the retest. So we're in a bullish uptrend. We are right now entering into the previous bull market range. We are finding resistance at POC and we have found support. Yeah, so support resistance flip right here, bullish. So yeah, it looks very bullish. I, I wish we could have gotten in at a, <clears throat> an earlier price. So here's the problem that I see with this. Bearish divergence on the weekly. Bearish divergence on the weekly. Um, confirmed. Confirmed bear div on the weekly. Um, bear div on the daily. I would want to see a pullback before I get into this. I would love to see, and look, I don't know if we're gonna get this, but I would love to see a retest of these highs, guys. Do you see this series of highs over here? May 2022, August 2022, and then support resistance flip in January, December, January. If we can get a pullback to here, that would be really nice. It's the Fibonacci golden pocket. I don't know if we're gonna get that, but I, I don't feel comfortable buying high after with a, with a confirmed bearish divergence right i would rather come down here into this box either to the trend line or slightly below and get in like this this is what i would want right i don't like buying high after a a uh, a bull a bearish divergence i can buy high after when we're currently about to get a money flow cross on the weekly when it looks like the move is just starting but this looks like the move needs to cool off a bit here all right this looks like the move needs to cool off a bit here. This is what I would look at. But it does look bullish, right? Everything about the market structure is bullish. It just looks like we need to cool off a, li a little bit here. You know? Shout out to Super Crypto. He says, the way to the Father is through the Son, Yeshua. That's right. God made himself known to us through Yeshua, right? No man has seen the Father at any time. But the only son who is in the bosom of the father he has made known the father to us that's what's so great about god he's all powerful but he is willing to come down to our level what a, what a great god to come down to our level he desires intimacy with us he desires to walk with us Shout out to Dave Digital. Jason suggests doing more perfect heavyweight squats for your core. Yeah, like I'll be honest, I don't usually train abs, but uh, heavy squats and deadlifts, I mean, that will work your core. You know, it will. Nothing wrong with training abs. Who is the father of Yeshua? Design aspects. I mean, look, Yeshua is God. He is, he is um, Jehovah, Yahweh, right? Yahweh has revealed himself to mankind in a complex way, right? So it's, it's difficult to understand but it is what the scripture clearly communicates from the Hebrew scriptures to the Greek scriptures. Why did I go to trade Bitcoin? Um, because 
the, the reason why I'm trading Bitcoin and not Forex or stocks is because um, for me, when I first got into trading, I, I wanted to trade Forex, but I had no money to trade Forex. I did have a lot of crypto, okay? I did have a lot of crypto because I, I put my whole life savings into Bitcoin in 2016. I put about $45,000 into Bitcoin in 2016. And once I realized you could trade Bitcoin the same way you could trade Forex, where you could long and short on margin, I said, this is for me. I have lots of capital. And then I lost lots of money, tens of thousands of dollars wasted before I actually learned how to do it properly. But that's why I went down the road of crypto. And now this is just where I'm at. Like I'm just comfortable here, All right? I'm comfortable here. Am I, you know, am I going to trade futures? Yes, probably. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to more traditional markets now. But I'm comfortable here. Yeah, and maybe that's a bad thing, right? It's good to get out of your comfort zone. But I'm already kind of out of my comfort zone, guys. Like I'm a pretty busy guy. Like I do a lot of things. You know, I really do. I've got three kids, a wife, a homestead, um, and a life outside of trading as well. So I'm in my, I'm in the groove for this, you know. I'm in the groove for this. How do you tone your chest? I mean, I've had a lot of success with, this is bro science, all right, bro science. I've had a lot of success with doing a lot of push-ups and flies every day, you know? So, the, the you know, the nucleus overload thing, I don't know if that's true. Like, when I was a kid, right? I'm, I'm not even kidding. When I was a kid, I used to only train arms and chest because that's all I knew, all right? It wasn't until I was older that I realized, oh, snap, I need to do my back and my legs. But when I was like, just getting into working out, I would do push-ups and curls every day. And to this day, my biceps are like jacked, right? They're jacked, you know? And I don't even work out my biceps anymore or my delts, right? I think it's because when I was younger, all I did was chest push-ups and, 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 and arms, you know? I don't know. Yeah, Moses saw and met God. Exactly, right? Yeah, so... So in, in, in scripture, there's a dichotomy where it says many times, no man has seen God and man cannot see God or else man will die. But then over and over again, people see God. Abraham saw God, you know? Abraham saw God multiple times. Moses talked to God face to face. And all the elders of Israel saw the God of Israel and they ate and drank with him. And Isaiah, in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw God. You know? So yeah, God appears to humanity as a human all the time. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures and of course in the Messiah, in Jesus. If you're going to troll Jason about the Bible, at least do it in Hebrew like a true scholar. <laughs> yeah. Freestyle Sunday. Uh, let me see if I could bust out a little freestyle. Yo, check it. Uh, here we go. Freestyle Sunday. About to trade Bitcoin. Doing it anyway. Buy low, then we're gonna sell high. Bitcoin price pumping way up high into the sky. Here we go. We're talking about the Bible. Every day when we're looking like a scribal. I don't like this beat. I can't really, I can't get down with it. I can't get down with it. I can't get down with this beat. I need a different beat. Someone, someone drop a nice beat. Maybe we could get a nice freestyle. God is just an imaginary friend, says Mario, just kidding. Maybe for you. Look, for me, like I said this in another stream. The only... The only intellectually honest position a person can take is that is agnosticism, right? When you look around at the creation and you see how intricately 
well designed everything is. You, you honestly have to be an idiot to say there's no creator. But so that's why the only intellectually honest position you could say is, yes, there's a creator, but I don't know who. I don't know who. Right. That's like saying that there's no God is, and that all this stuff just created itself. That's literally like me saying that the computer I'm streaming on right now created itself because over long periods of time and physics, which also created itself, just came together and poof, now I have this machine that works very well. Right? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So at least be intellectually honest and say there is a creator, I just don't know who or what the creator is. Now, you know, I take it a step further and say, I do know who the creator is, you know? <laughs> All right. Shout out to... Lonzo for the super chat, one of the fittest traders I know. <laughs> Would love your thoughts on based Brett on base chain. Yeah, um. All right, let's check out Brett. Let's check out Brett. Check out Brett. What exchange is best to look at? BitGet? We'll look at BitGet. Seems to have the most data. Oh, man. Um... I'm sorry, man. I don't really know what to say about this coin here because, uh, well, I, I, I don't know what to say about it. I think, I think this, let's, let's look at the one on CoinX. So it looks bullish, you know, um, it looks very bullish. The four hour looks very bullish. Let's check out the six. The six hour also looks bullish. I, where I don't know where I would want to get into this, right? I know we were looking at this a little while before, and I think we were saying that this was a, a good place to look to get in because it's basically the low of the range before the breakout. I don't remember when we were looking at this, right? Maybe a week ago, but uh, right now I'm not sure. Like, if you're very bullish on it fundamentally. Well, it's only been listed since March 7th, so you're still early. Um, but yeah, like we've already come back down to support. And so right now, the only option I would see is to wait for another pullback to flip what used to be resistance now into support. You know what I'm saying? Why is Easter always at a different time of the year? Well, it's because there's different traditions on how to calculate the date, right? So, originally, Easter, or Passover, in every language except German and English, Easter is called Passover. In Latin, Pascha, in Spanish, Pasqua, right? In Greek, Pascha, and all this, right? So it's called Passover, because it is Passover, right? the 14th day of the month of Nisan, or Aviv, according to the scripture, is Passover. And the, the Sunday after the Sabbath, after Passover, is the, it's the day where the priest waves the first sheaf of barley before the Lord in the temple. And that is the day that also Jesus rose from the dead. So, Jesus rose from the dead the Sunday after Passover, all right, which is also a, a biblical appointed time, according to Leviticus 23, the, 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 the morning after the Sabbath after Passover, right? But over the years, 
people have shifted to different calendars. So, you know, right now the Hebrew calendar, the Hillel 2 calendar, is not even the same calendar that was being used back in Jesus' day. It's similar. But it was created after the, the diaspora to keep Jews on, on the same calendar, right? Because it's difficult to it's difficult to know when the right time of year is if you're scattered all over the world because part of the calendar is, you know, basically what's happening with the weather, right? But then also over the years, the the Gentile believers in Jesus kind of distanced themselves from uh, the Jewish roots of the faith for various reasons. And they created their own calendar. So the, the Julian calendar, I guess with the Catholic tradition and the Gregorian calendar, they calculate it to be the Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Which makes sense because if the biblical Passover is on the 14th day of the month in the first month of the year, which is in spring, then it would make sense that the first full moon in spring, the first Sunday after that, would probably be the Sunday after Passover. But the Julian Gregorian calendar does not line up with the Hillel II calendar that the Jewish people use to this day. And the Orthodox Church, which split from the Catholic Church, the Great Schism back in the day, they have another way to calculate it, which escapes my exact memory right now. And so, Basically, whenever, it, from our perspective as Western Catholic, right, the Catholic Church begot the Protestant Church, which is the primary church in the West, right, in the East, they're still primarily Orthodox. But we do it based on the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the vernal equinox. So whenever that happens, that's when Easter is, right? Um, but if you're going based on the Hillel 2 calendar, like this year, you know, Hillel 2 calendar, if you're Jewish, if you're Messianic, you're Jewish and you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, you know, that was promised in the Hebrew scriptures, then you would celebrate it at the end of April. Because this year was a leap year, and so they had to put the 13th month in the Jewish calendar this year to intercalate so that things keep in the cycle. And so it moves every year. That's why. So is that too much information for you? I'm sorry. All right. You know, I'm sorry if that's too much information for you. How accurate is my trading bot? My trading bot is, um, it, it, so the, the, my specific trading bot is set up so that you, um, you set it up yourself, all right? You tell it where to go in and you tell it what confirmations to, to take. It's not, it's not an auto bot. The, uh, the crypto fusion bot is definitely not an auto bot. Why don't I come to the Holy Land? Uh, I, I just I just don't have uh, I just don't want to go man to be honest with you I don't want to go shout out to Steve what are my thoughts on fetch AI why is Christmas always in the same time of the year because Christmas is just a made-up holiday right Christmas is just a made-up day it's not biblical and it's definitely not like yeah so so Easter is biblical in a sense that Passover is biblical. It's a historical event, and it's outlined in the Bible when it should be. Christmas, people just made it up, and they said, yeah, we'll do it on the 25th of December, you know, at least in the West. In the East, January 6th, all right? So it's very different. They're two very, very different things, all right? <laughs> very different things, right? You know? <laughs> so yeah, like Christmas is... At, like as on bullish on parade says it's kind of just uh, yeah it, it's 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 a it's a christianized pagan celebration basically right 
you know, there were there were celebrations that were happening around the the winter solstice. And so they just kind of Christianized them. And there is, yeah, look, I understand that some people say that the birth of Jesus was calculated to be the, around the winter time based on his death and all that. Look, I understand that. But in general, yeah, they're two separate things. Christmas and Easter are not the same as far as their, uh, you know. Yeah, see, Mark Harris, it, like, you got, you have to be careful, because Mark Harris says Christmas is Saturnalia and Easter is Ishtar, and both are pagan holidays. I do think we have to be careful with that, Mark Harris, because, although I would agree with you that Christmas, uh, you know, historically speaking, is not biblical, and it also has adopted many pagan traditions, like I said, Easter... We cannot say the same thing about Easter, all right? And the reason I say that, Mark Harris, is because I don't think you can make the connection between Easter and Ishtar. And the reason I say that is because in every single language, in every language in the world, except German and English, people don't call it Easter. They call it Passover. The Latin Vulgate called it Pascha, right? And if, when you spoke Latin, you said, we're going to celebrate Passover. You speak Spanish, even to this day, they're going to celebrate Pasqua. They're going to celebrate Pesach, right? Pesach, Passover. And so when we look historically at why and how modern day Christianity celebrates what we call Easter, but historically has been called Passover, it really has nothing to do with the goddess Ishtar. It really has to do with them trying to calculate the day that Jesus rose from the dead. So we need to be really careful with that because although the modern day Christianity has inherited pagan traditions like Easter eggs and Easter bunnies, and they try and mix together, you know, fertility goddess worship with the worship of uh, Yahweh, which is, in my opinion, wrong. The holiday itself, Easter, is biblical in the sense that in Leviticus 23, all right, in Leviticus 23, in the Torah, Easter, it's what we call in English, Passover, which is called in every other language, is a biblical God-ordained day, all right? The Sunday after the Sabbath, after the Passover, is biblical, all right? So we got to be real careful, Mark Harris. We got to be real careful, man. Yep, that's right. Christos. Pascha in Greek. Now, I, I don't really know Greek very well, like I know Hebrew. But, yeah. We gotta be real careful because we don't just want to say something's bad because th there's a certain word that sounds like Ishtar. You know what I'm saying? Alright, we we're gonna look at Fetch AI. Alright? All right, Fetch AI, breaking out of the introverted head and shoulders pattern. <laughs> yeah, so look, this thing is bullish. The weekly needs to cool off a little bit. All right, we, we were watching this thing from, from the break and we've broken, all right? Our target is still above us. So I'd say we could still look for a move up to $8, all right? We could still look for a move up to $8. But um, let's go to the deal. Let's see if we can find some kind of good entry here, all right? Let's see if we can find some kind of good entry. All right, so you guys are gonna hate me for this because this is what I always say, but right now, Fetch AI, we have liquidity that can be grabbed, plus Golden Pocket 786, plus a daily order block right down here. And so if we get the move down, let's say we do get a correction here, 
because the weekly does need to cool off of about 40%. I know this, I know, I know what you guys are saying, but that would be a really, really nice setup. That would be a really nice setup. Take the highs, take the lows, right? We're looking at this as a sideways range, right? We took the highs. If we fall back down into the range, we look to take the lows, right? If we hold above this range and you're a high risk, aggressive trader, you know, maybe you say, all right, I'm going in because we didn't, we didn't come back down to retest. You could take it up to a higher level. All right. All right, let's check out some of the I know we had another super chat in here. All right, ETH5. Let's take a look at ETH5. Thank you so much for the super chat. All right, ETH5. So, oh man. We don't have much data on ETHFI here. The four hour time frame. All right, guys. Here's what I see for ETHFI, all right? It looks bullish to me in general because of the market structure. We have very little data to actually work with here, right? We have very little data. We have very little data to work with. Here, here's what I'd say. Since this last rise to the upside, most of the volume is above us right now, which means the bears are technically in control, right? Ideally, I would love to see it move back down to the low of the range to take out the liquidity and retest support resistance flip. Th this is what I would look for. All right. This to me is a good setup here for a new high. Are we going to get that? Maybe, maybe not. So another more aggressive place to look to get in is a sign of strength. What would a sign of strength be right now? A sign of strength right now locally would be a break above the high volume node and then come back down for the retest, right? Because if we break above the high volume node, that's a local change of market structure, right? We have our high, our low, our lower high, our lower low. Then we make a higher high. And so then we look for the retest into that Fibonacci golden pocket uh, POC zone. So we would be looking for basically this. Basically, we're looking for the inverted head and shoulders, right? Only if we break market structure to the upside. If we don't do that, then I would be looking for a liquidity grab of the lows, right? So those are the only two entry points I would see on this thing. Either we see a confirmed change of market structure locally, right? We make a higher high and then we come back down for a higher low into our support resistance flip or we fail to make the higher high. And so we wait for the liquidity grab down at the Fibonacci golden pocket around $5 and 63 cents. Those are really only the two things that I see here. You know, shout out to eight love. Jake, he says, happy trans awareness, blue hair, non-binary Sam Bankman free day, Jason. Why? Right, thank you. Thank you. Long or short. Yes, yes, yes. Always. Yes. Always yes. Always yes. Shout out to Brett Hallman in the chat. Islam was created by the Catholics, says Chimp. I've heard that, man. I don't know. One thing I know for certain is that they, th the Jews definitely trolled Muhammad like crazy. Like, they trolled him like crazy. If you read some of the hadiths, they trolled him because they knew he didn't know what he was talking about. And that's why, like, there's some weird stuff <laughs> in some of those uh, discussions. But, you know, what do I know? I don't think I, I don't think it was created by the Catholics, but maybe it was. I've heard that. Happy Carbon Emission Studies Day! Thank you, thank you. 
thank you, thank you. All right, can we check out SUI? Yeah, we could check out SUI, why not? Let's look at SUI. All right, uh, green dot on the weekly. We don't really have money flow here yet. Bull bearish dip on the daily. Look, overall SUI is, is bullish, all right? All right, this thing is bullish, and I, what's hard about it, guys, I'll be honest, what's really hard about this is we have very, what I would consider to be sloppy, sloppy market structure along the way up. The only thing we can do right now locally is assume that this is a, that, that a bottom is in here. I really don't like the look of this market structure, but we, if we assume this is the bottom, a bottom, I should say, and we pull the range, right? Then I would be looking right now to get in golden pocket value area low at a dollar fifty six, right? That's where I'd be looking to get in. All right, that's where I'd be looking to get in. That's where I'd be looking to get in. I missed your super chat, Betty. I'm so sorry, Betty. Let me let me check that right now. I apologize. All right. Shout out to Kimu Api. All right. Shout out to Sergio Onhill. And shout out to Alonzo. Shout out to Betty Finder. Uh, you need a don't FOMO speech. You want to FOMO. What do you want to FOMO into, Betty? Uh, I mean, look, I'll give you a, a, no, a, a don't FOMO speech. All right. The markets will always be here. They will always, always be here tomorrow. Um, there's no reason ever to FOMO into any position or any trade because there's always going to be opportunities tomorrow in either a different asset or the same asset. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I am here every single day and every single week there are trades to take. Something else to keep in mind is, um, why are we here? Are we here because we want to to catch a big move or are we here because we want to make money consistently over time we're here to make money consistently over time and part of that is patience and waiting for the good setups and if the good setup isn't here now it will be here in the future it will be here in the future plenty of good setups will be here in the future and so if you're taking this seriously and if you actually want to be here for the long term and if you want to make money in these markets FOMO is, is going to destroy your ability to do that because if you accidentally buy the top and it doesn't go in your favor, now you don't even have the means to get in at a good opportunity when it presents itself because you just got wrecked. Something else to keep in mind is if you're taking a trade without a plan and you're buying something after a big pump, right? Let's say you're buying here, right? For example. Now you have to think to yourself, before you before you even enter any position, again, you need to know the three things. You need to know, first of all, why are you entering here? What's your target and what's your stop loss, right? If you don't know those three things, let's say you do buy here and price does this, and now you're up. You're, a prime example is I just bought Trump coin, right? Without a plan, I just bought Trump coin without a plan. I made 700 bucks, then it went all the way back down to 50. Right? I had no plan for where am I getting out of this thing, right? I didn't even set a limit order. So again, now you're in the profit, but let's say now it comes back down below your entry and you say to yourself, well, now what? Should I wait or should I sell? Well, let's say you wait and it does this. Then what? Do you wait or, then, or do you sell? It starts to do this. You're like, oh, I'm going to wait. Then it does this. Then what? See, you don't know because you didn't plan it out before you even entered the position, right? You need to know before you enter any position, what's your plan? And your goal with all of this is to come up with trading plans that look something like this, right? Where you're aiming for four times more profit than you're risking. So that over the course of, let's say, you know, over the course of all these trades here, right? You take four trades, right? You're risking, let's say, 
you know, 1% to make 4% in all these trades, right? You're risking 1% to make 4%. You take two losses, you lose 2%. You take two wins, you make 8%, right? Your total net positive of a 50% win rate is 5% on your whole account, right? Because you lose 2%, and then after losing 2%, you make 8%. And including for fees and the smaller accounts and all that, you're probably gonna be in a net positive 5% because you are sticking to a plan, allowing losses to happen and allowing wins to happen. And over time, let's say that price is just trading sideways, right? Trading sideways in a range and you long every bottom, right? Sometimes you take a loss, but then you long every bottom again right? And you, this time you take a loss and we break down, right? You have exited the market now in profit after taking two wins and two losses. And let's say then, let's say something like this happens, right? You're sticking to your plan, right? You take a loss, you take another loss, you take a win, and then you take another win. And this time the trade just keeps going, right? It keeps going. Now you've got yourself into a nice swing trade after taking a partial profit or something, right? So you got to look at the big picture here because I, I, I do know people who have FOMO'd in and have gotten a lot of money, but those people, unless they have the discipline to get out and never come back to the market again, they always lose it in the long run, right? They always lose it in the long run. Come on, Bitcoin, we gotta smash through. All right, we gotta smash through. My market cipher money flow settings, they are um, stock market cipher settings. I don't have any changed settings. All right, I don't have any changed settings. Shout out to Splash Fire Films in the chat. Bomo into the likes. So shout out to Betty. Shout out to Jellybean, shout out to Dave Digital. All right, Dave Digital with some copyright free music. All right, let's, let's check out the copyright free music. free dub reggae interesting man this is dub reggae nice man let's let's boom is boom doing crazy stuff right now not really I'm up 5% on my boom, all right? Shout out to M. Freeze in the chat. What's going on, bro? Shout out to Joseph Martinez. God bless you, Joseph Martinez. Shout out to Trader Geo in the chat, guys. Make sure to go subscribe to Trader Geo if you're not subscribed, man. Trader Geo busting out in the pump song, all right? Trader Geo busting out in the pump song. Man, shout out to Trader Geo busting out in the pump song, guys. You got to check it out, man. That's crazy, all right? Someone else singing the pump song. Let's check it out. Make sure to go subscribe to Trader Geo. We are going to pump the price. Are you ready? Listen to this guy sing the pump song. We're going to dump. No, we're going to pump. We're going to dump. No, we're going to pump. We're going to dump. No, we're going to pump. Pump the Bitcoin, baby, let's go. We're going to dump. Good, man. 
Yeah, make sure to go subscribe to Trader Geo, guys. You definitely don't want to miss his his content. He has his, his he has his unique style of trading. All right, we he's uh like kind of like a, a similar to mine, but also he uses other stuff, vector candles. He's a good trader, all right, and uh, he's an entertainer, right? So if you like being entertained with your TA, don't sleep on Trader Geo. All right, he's he's getting close to 10k subs. Let's pump him up to 10k subs. He's a new channel, guys, but he's growing at a high rate. He's performing. His channel is performing at the same rate as a lot of as a lot of other bigger channels, all right? Because I stalked him on Social Blade. So right now, Trader Geo is all the rage, all right? He's all the rage. His growth rate is quite well, quite high on YouTube. So let's keep it going. Let's keep it going, all right? And let's get our, our, our music back on here. Shout out to Trader Geo. Oh man, shout out to Hayden. Can you look at spell? Yeah, we could look at spell. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, let's look at spell. Looks like we're already doing some analysis for spell here, but we got the bullish signs on the chart with the uneven butt cheeks. Um, yeah, so look, I mean, I, I think it looks, it looks, uh, let's go to the weekly here. It looks to me really bullish. I, I would actually, you know, we've already broken out of the wedge here. Money flow, once we get this next green dot on the weekly, it's going to be go time, all right? It's going to be go time. We've already hit the target of our wedge. We've come back for the Fibonacci Golden Pocket retest, gotten a bounce from it. Uh, you know, a good buy zone for me would have to be coming down to this box here, right? To retest the support resistance flip at around 73, 76, all the way up toward 93, 68. But I'd say, given the nature of this thing, like deploying a little capital now after a bounce from the 618 is not necessarily a bad idea. But an ideal situation is get down a little lower, get that weekly green dot, start to see some real bullish divs forming here. Money flow on the daily is looking real good, guys. Honestly, a move down below these lows would be very, very juicy. All right. Now, I have to head out, guys. All right. I have to head out. Shout out to Southern Man, Crisis King. Yeah, Crisis King. And here's the thing, guys. It's true, Crisis King. Um, the most important thing in my life is my relationship with God, my relationship with Jesus, because that's the only place you can find purpose and hope in this life. The fact that although mankind is fallen in a sinful state, separated from God, God cared about us so much that he he humbled himself, he took on flesh, and he took on flesh, he took on the form of a human and died to pay for all the wrong things that we've ever done. But he rose again from the dead, and a lot of people celebrate that on this day. And because he rose from the dead, we also have the physical hope of a physical bodily resurrection. And also if we purpose it in our heart to turn away from our evil ways and seek him, 
he will give us his Holy Spirit to fundamentally change us from the inside out so we actually can be a new creation with different desires and put our life on a completely different trajectory. And a lot of people celebrate that today. What a great thing. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to head out and uh, I'll see y'all probably tomorrow unless my wife has a baby today, in which case I probably won't see you tomorrow. So peace.